All right, perfect. So hello everyone and welcome. It's so great to see you guys. It's so great to see you guys here. It's so great to be live with you guys. We are streaming live on Facebook. So, you know, this is my usual icebreaker. Hello, Russian government. Hello, Chinese government as well, always spying on us. Here we are. Let's see who else has got to get into the, the meeting. Okay, I think it's all of us. Okay, awesome. Beautiful, I'm so excited, you know. I hope you guys had a great Thanksgiving and uh, I'm, I'm sorry that we had to postpone this event, but I'm very happy to be here with you tonight and I'm very happy to see so many people online tonight. This is so exciting and so amazing to be connected with you all. So um, yeah, we had to postpone this event which was supposed to take place two weeks ago because as you know, the situation of the logistics, the international situation was pretty much messed up. So some of the shipments were delayed. So I wanted to make these while you guys were had all received your, you know, your 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 wines. So um, yeah, I tell you how this is gonna work a little bit. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to be rude when I asked you to deactivate your audio, please. Uh, so yeah. Uh, because now I'm going to start, I'm going to make an introduction. I'm going to make an introduction on what we are talking tonight, what we're talking about tonight, which is going to be biodynamic and organic and organic wines. So I'm going to get you, you know, a general, a brief introduction. We're going to see some slides that I, that I prepared, that I prepared beforehand. So you have the visual, the visuals as well. Then I'm going to introduce you amazing, amazing guests which are two really good friends of mine, two very, two very uh, talented, talented winemakers who devoted their lives to biodynamic production. So um, their names are Sebastian Nazello and Maurizio Comitini. Sebastian Nazello is the CEO and winemaker of the winery Poderele Ripi in Montalcino. Maurizio Comitini is the owner and winemaker of the winery Croce di Febo in uh, Montepulciano. So I'm very excited to have them online with us. So I'm going to make an introduction. Then we will have a chat with Sebastian Nazello, the winemaker of Podere Le Ripi, to understand their philosophy of winemaking and how they make biodynamic wine. What's the approach of biodynamic farming? And then, you know, we, you guys can ask questions to Sebastian and also Maurizio, Maurizio which I'm going to introduce afterwards. After I've introduced Maurizio, we're gonna taste two of his wines that you guys got uh, delivered in the past uh, few weeks, which are the Vino Nobile, Croce di Febo 2017 for the bronze and silver members and the Reserva from Croce di Febo 2015, Amore Mio. So there is the Vino Nobile Reserva 2015. So after I say goodbye to Maurizio, afterwards we'll be tasting another wine, Igrifi from Avignonese 2018, that you have all received as part of the wine club shipment because all the four it levels, they have this wine, you know? Mm -hmm. So, okay, perfect. So I think, let's see if everyone is in the conversation. Wow, there's a lot of people. It's great to see you guys online. And, uh, and now I'm gonna I'm gonna start with the introduction and I'm gonna share the screen. So please deactivate your audio, otherwise this is gonna be a mess, yeah? Right on, okay, perfect. I'm gonna share the screen now and this is the, um, and this is the, you know, the, the, the presentation. Okay. On the left. Okay, can, can you please deactivate your audio? I think I, I've heard Steven and the video, I think. Let's see if you guys can please deactivate your, otherwise you, you won't see the screen. Okay, perfect. Thank you guys very much. Awesome. Okay, so this is the flyer of the presentation. Okay. Okay, sorry, <laughs> I was too forward. I'm sorry, but I'm alone managing the whole thing. So it's kind of, you know, difficult. Okay. Organic and biodynamic. Who are they? 
So they are wine makers. Actually, it's better to call them farmers whose goal is to make authentic wines through more sustainable and eco-conscious farming practices. The characteristics of these winemakers are, they are terroir-driven, eclectic, enthusiastic, passionate, sometimes even naive, and definitely, definitely stubborn. I say this word twice because they are very stubborn people. And this is what I love. They make wines that have no compromise, you know, take it or leave it. And I really love their philosophy of winemaking. So organic and biodynamic farmers pay attention to the quality of their wines while protecting both mother nature and the final consumers from harmful, harmful, harmful chemical elements, such as synthetic fertilizers, pesticides, and high presence of sulfites. You know, sulfites are the ones that give you the really bad headache after the day after you drink wine. So, you know, the presence of sulfites is limited by a very strict set of rules for organic and biodynamic wine. So, you know, they are allowed to add just a ridiculous, ridiculously small amount of sulfites in order to preserve, you know, to preserve the quality, uh, the quality of the wine and to preserve the, you know, your head from having terrible headache the day after. So often small wineries are organic in Italy, but many big producers are now converting to more sustainable and more authentic farming practices in which the imprinting of the winemaker is given by the, um, uh, the hard labor in the vineyard. Uh, in, in, sorry, I have some noises. In the vineyard and not by shortcuts in the cellar. So, my computer is exceptionally slow <laughs> today. So we can consider them as athletes that refuse the use of steroids and train hard with passion in order to achieve their goals, you know, which is very, is very important to work hard in order to preserve the quality of the wines. Okay, so therefore their wines are usually, this is a general assessment, floral, vibrant, extremely pure, unfiltered, and sincere. In one word, authentic. So this is import, an important concept because 30 years ago, when the dispute between organic and biodynamic wines and the so-called conventionalists, so non-organic wines, they were marked by their haters as vinegary, extreme, and not long-lived. Now, after you know, many years, in a world in which technology and knowledge have replaced chemistry in farming and in the cellar, the wines are technically flawless and longevous, resulting more of, often more intense, complex, and for sure, non-artificial compared to conventional wines. Okay, not turning pages. I don't know why. <laughs> we go on to the next slide. Okay, organic versus biodynamic. Maybe Sebastian afterwards can give us a better idea about the difference of these two of these two methods of farming and philosophies of farming. So basically, organic and biodynamic are very similar. Both are grown without the use of chemicals or GMOs. The main difference between the two approaches is that biodynamic farming uses different principles that add vitality to the plants, the soil, and the livestock, whereas traditional farming typically deteriorates the soil. So biodynamic agriculture is based on the work of Rudolf Steiner. Rudolf Steiner was an um, Austrian philosopher and scientist who started the whole biodynamic philosophy and methods of farming who gave article, uh, agricultural uh, courses in 1924. So the philosophy includes ecological principles, emphasizing spiritual, such as following the moon calendar and mystical perspective, such as burying homegrown manure inside of a bull horns in the soil, which is a weird technique that we will see with Sebastian. We will actually investigate how they make it and we'll ask Sebastian how they make it, which is very, very interesting. So biodynamics, biodynamic aims 
at the ecological self-sufficiency self of farms as cohesive interconnected living systems. So some Greek growers who have adopted biodynamic methods claim to have achieved improvements in the health of their vineyards, specifically in the areas of biodiversity, soil, fertility, crop nutrition, pest, weed, and disease management. So the point with biodynamic is you get what you get pretty much because you, know, you get what uh, nature and the hard labor give you. So some aspects of biodynamic can be considered silly but you know, the spiritual mystical perspectives are also a charming part of it. So yeah, these are the slides that are sent with the wine club shipments as well. Okay, now if it ever turns page, there you go. So these are my considerations. I'm very happy and thrilled. You know, it is exciting to see the marvelous results reached by uh, the movement of organic and biodynamic wines in the last decade, especially after a difficult start in the 90s, during which not all the wines were enjoyable or technically impeccable. So the world of organic wines has lived an incredible growth due to the more advanced technology and intense studies on new farming and winemaking techniques. So while I obviously truly believe in a more conscious approach to farming, I also believe that the great quality and uniqueness of organic and biodynamic wines are now evident in a beautiful scenario in which a high quality wine is made through sustainability, uh, sustainability and respect for the final consumer and most importantly for our planet. Yeah, this is something that, you know, uh, just my final consideration that, you know, uh, I didn't want to be too poetic on this, but this is what I, what I personally think. So to sum up the difference between conventional and organic or biodynamic approach to farming, I compared the first one to a well-built highway that takes you on a faster and more safe journey. While the second one is a country road that makes you drive a bit slower, but shows you beautiful landscape and colors on the way. I got very poetical here at the end. Isn't the journey more important than the destination? I believe so. There you are. Now I'm introducing our great special guest, Sebastian Nazello, CEO and winemaker of the revolutional biodynamic winery Poderelle Ripi in Montalcino. The guy, to say the least, is passionate, focused, and exceptionally driven. I would say that he is pretty much obsessed with wine. He loves wine and, you know, he loves every aspect of it. Okay, Sebastian, I think if you're live. Ciao, Ciao Francesco. Ciao to everyone. Ciao. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. And you? I was a bit nervous. So I, as you might have noticed from my, <laughs> from my presentation, I was nervous because I'm alone doing the whole thing. So I hope everyone is in... Is in is now in the call. So yeah, I think so. Okay, great. It's great to see you, Sebastian. Me too. Me too. And uh, yeah, that's also a nice time of the year because uh, let's say we have more time, and uh, and the nature and the vineyards are recovering and and going going for a long sleep during winter time, and uh, yeah, it's a. Uh... So this is your low season because you're very busy ever since ever since March. So when yeah. the vines, they start to, you know, the, yeah. the, the annual life cycle, then you have, you know, you have the green harvest, uh, yeah. the, 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 yeah, whole, we, the whole process. Yeah, uh, through, through my experience, I, I, let's say, I saw the, 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 let's say the job in the winery change a lot in the last few years, because especially in, my, in our winery, Podere Le Ripi, um, we have more and more work during the year, and this is why we are getting out from the seasonal, seasonality of the farming model. Um, that it's let's say it's it's also very pleasant, no? because we can engage people twelve months per year, and uh, and this is typical of farms where uh, we okay we do wine that's our core business, but we try to to thrive our place like a farming model, a bit more complex and a bit more rich of uh, different cultivations and, uh, and animals and yeah. It's, yeah. 
It is, it is very interesting. So first of all, let me introduce you a little bit better, yeah? Because we are about the same age, but you are, I mean, now it's not that you're old, but you used to be the rising star of Montalcino. Now you are the shining star of the firmament of Montalcino. You as a winemaker and your winery, Podere Le Ripi. So I've been following you guys since the beginning. I'm a big fan of the winery. As you know, we are really good, good friends. So you got awarded the, the Gambelli Award of Best uh, Young Winemaker of the Country, of Italy, in 2017? Yeah. yeah. I remember we did a big dinner, a big celebration. Yeah. I remember the dinner. I don't remember what happened afterwards because we <laughs> celebrated a lot, but still, it was fun. So, you know, you have your name is strictly linked to Brunello di Montalcino and to Biodynamic uh, Wine. So... Uh, who better than you can introduce us to the world of biodynamic wines? So, yeah. uh, you know, talk, tell us about a little bit about the, the wine, the Podere Le Ripi, and when you started to make wine, they started before they hired you because we were yeah, yeah. teenagers yeah. when they started. Yeah. Well, the, wine, the, about... wine, the wine has been formed in 97, but uh, let's say like nine, more than 90% of the wineries of Montalcino but the Leripi was a was a farmhouse with uh, with animals and different cultivations, but let's say not super focused on viticulture. This is uh, this is the first important things to understand when we talk about uh, I think uh, Tuscan wineries, because uh, let's say we are going to talk about biodynamic farming and how biodynamic uh, model it's a kind of um, let's say new. <laughs> how the, the old became new. And um, I mean, Tuscany, it's also very close to our story and our soul because uh, um, I, I think that since 50, 70 years ago, no one in Tuscany uh, could live just making wine. But every winery was a farmhouse where more than one family tried to survive making stuff for for. for for the for the family for Definitely. the trading yeah and this is why let's say today places like Montalcino of course are very focused in wine but uh, our uh, our uh, our real identity and soul is based in uh, more generic farming with uh, with olive groves with grain with even coal and wood stuff and uh, and wine wine became uh, our let's say our uh, economic uh, locomotive. But uh, let's say wineries, in, if you're going to be in Montalcino, I think most of you have been here, uh, you, you will explore this landscape where there are vineyards, but are surrounded by, by more complex ecosystem. And this is a, one of the beauty and one of the, uh, the strength of our, of our terroir and our, uh, and our wine, I yeah. would say. And yeah, and in Podere Le Ripi, uh, start to follow the biodynamic method has been very easy because um, let's say we, we had this, uh, uh, this necessity to, to go in the direction of a wine that uh, will be very strongly linked with the place where we are, where sense of place is our priority, uh, sense of place in terms of of course, soil, climate, but also uh, vintage. And, uh, and to follow this kind of personality wine, I, we need some, some method that, have, that should be very, let's say, soft and with a lower in, interaction as possible with the, with the vineyards or with the wine. And in my personal opinion, biodynamic is very respectful of the identity of the place, because uh, let's say you, it's it's a beautiful it's a beautiful method that um, it's not uh, already it's not like a recipe. No, there is not one biodynamic method. In every place around the world, you can tailor it your biodynamic method, and um, is a it's just a philosophy where you should know where you wanna go, and after you should find your path. And this is uh, so beautiful because it's a kind of uh, polar star that you follow and uh, you, you spend so much energy and time try to understand your place and try to understand how you can escort and how you can preserve and, and respect your place in the best way. 
Uh, of course, the biodynamic that we can do in Montalcino is completely different than the biodynamic that, you, that someone else could make in uh, California or Australia, because yep. there are different climates and different soil. And, uh, and it's very, very personal. Even in Montalcino, there are six, seven biodynamic wineries, but are, all of them are very different. And, it's true. Uh, and, and this is a, it's a, it's also an exercise of uh, creativity, no? Because, uh, okay, you, you should keep in mind the value of biodynamic about, let's say, not chemicals, uh, about uh, what is more and richer is better for the plants. And, uh, but after it's all about discovering your, your, your best method and your, your, and your best practices. And it's always an evolving process. Every year yeah. you learn, every year you, you bring in some new stuff, new ideas. Yeah. And I know that you, and also the next guest that we have, Maurizio, you guys is difficult to follow because from, from a, from a, you know, a, a salesperson perspective because you invent new things every year and it's beautiful to follow you up because every year you can you come up with new improvements with different methods, yeah. you know. So it, it is beautiful to, to see, you know, the evolution of yeah. your wines, the evolution of your methods of doing farming. So it is very exciting. So now, if you don't mind, I think we can, we can, I'm going to show some slides that you have from your website, which is beautifully made, the blog section of your web, website that is called uh, behind the glass section of the website, which is www.podereleripi.it, I think. Okay, let's exit from here. Hold on a second, because I... I <laughs> Okay, here we are. All righty, here we are. Almost there. <laughs> okay. I think you can see the screen. Yeah, this is your beautiful website. You know, biodynamic farming, biodynamic set podere le ripi. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, I've been introducing Rudolf Steiner before from 1924. And yeah, can you, can you tell us a little bit more um, about the difference in between organic farming and biodynamic farming, like I explained before, you know, yeah. what's the actual difference? Yeah, organic, organic farming is the first step to move in a sustainable, more sustainable uh, method. And there is worldwide recognized uh, this is why it's based in standard. Standard that can help the farmers to understand what they can use and when and how much of that. And this is important not because, uh, let's say, um, when you don't have limits, you tend to uh, use day by day more chemical stuff. Organic, it's very, let's say, clear. And it's, it's, it's all about... Uh, what you can use and how much, and um, and it's uh, based in a mostly uh, not refined chemical uh, molecules, but mostly mm -hmm. organic, and um, it's 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 a cleaner way to to make food in, in with farming, yeah. biodynamic, and it's it's completely regulated by the law and by the governments. Uh, biodynamic is a bit different because biodynamic, uh, uh, biodynamic, uh, like Francesco told, is not based in viticulture, but is a wider concept of farming, and uh, it's a philosophy. It's not recognized by any, let's say, government or any, any institution, institu institutions, but is uh, it's um, it's 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 very uh, it. it is something you can follow and uh, you can decide to certificate or not. The certification goes through private association of a biodynamic farmer or institution that can, that gonna check you and check what you do, check how you produce food and or wine or whatever, and uh, guarantee your, uh, the their own standard of biodynamic farming. 
and uh, it's a private certification. Let's say it's not yeah. wire yeah. recognized. And, yeah, uh, so it's it's a whole concept, you know, it's a whole concept of synergy between yeah. plants, between plants and animals, so the whole yeah. ecosystem environment. But we will talk about the ecosystem afterwards because I want to see your slides that are really, really well made. So the hummus, you know, your manure is very, is it's it's the most important thing for you guys. And here, you know, he he explains why you pass from an organic to a biodynamic to a biodynamic standard uh, production because you you want to guarantee long term sustainability and you know you wanted to commit to all natural forces which is yeah. very 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 interesting so some some people uh, some people think that this is kind of a naive aspect because some you know uh, some people they have a different thought so they say oh biodynamics are you know these guys that dance naked under the full moon smoking you know something illegal in our country with the bare feet we're you know whatever so but i think you know it's a philosophy it's a commitment that you make towards your particular land towards the quality of the wine the quality of your you know uh, your harvest it can be the harvest of the grapes or the harvest of the other plants that you have, you know, and it's a beautiful synergy of all elements, which is very, very, very interesting. So I yeah, wanted to, to Francesco, yeah. very important to say is every biodynamic certification is based over an organic certification. This is why to be biodynamic, yes. first you should be organic. And this is very important because very often people and uh, let's say uh, people that don't trust in biodynamic they start they, they very they took a lot about the topic of uh, let's say the moon calendar the biodynamic preparations all these stuff that are a bit more complicated and not fully explainable by science today yeah but we can we can't forget that if, if you are biodynamic, first of all, you are a good organic farmer. And this is already Absolutely. great because you avoid most of the chemical and you, you, you do many good stuff for your place. And, and just in addition of the good organic principle, you have different concepts like the biodiversity, like the humus, like the, uh, the live organisms into the soil or into the farm. And uh, this is wider but in a good sense this is why yeah. let's say organic uh, let's say biodynamic could be strange and it's difficult to explain this is why most of the people think that it's strange but it's it's really very reliable because at the end is organic at least yeah and yeah and, and this is what i'm finding out you know the more biodynamic wines i taste and the and the more this system is applied to wine making like i was saying before you were saying it's the it is a constant evolution so you know it's not something that it's actually as you say it's something it's a new school but that applies old school methods because my grandfather he wasn't you know a wizard doing crazy tricks in the garden but he would follow the moon calendar the moon yeah. calendar because he didn't have chemicals he didn't have knowledge he just you know he just learned from his father grandfather who have learned from their father grandfathers you know and so on so it is beautiful to see this back to the future effect yeah. of biodynamics applied to farming because i see 95% of the stuff you're doing now that results almost new it's what my grandfather was doing when I was a kid my father yeah. my grandfather he was planting you know pumpkins or tomatoes he was growing you know uh, vegetables but he he'd never use chemicals so it is nice to see how you guys are going back to the past because probably in the 80s, the 90s, with all the, you know, all the scientific progress and the chemistry applied to farming, it was easier, you know, to fight certain diseases. But if you yeah. spray chemicals in the vineyards, maybe you kill the worms and the worms are very helpful because they help you to work the soil, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, you have to create an ecosystem, an environment that were, you know, uh, that can guarantee also the high quality of the final product. So I'm going to share the screen again because I wanted to ask you about the, the moon calendar. 
So why is the moon calendar uh, so important in terms of farming and winemaking as well? Okay, Ella. Um, Ella, to understand uh, why we follow the moon calendar uh, or the, let's say, the biodynamic calendar, we should say something about biodynamic. Biodynamic, it's completely involved and, and let's say, dedicated to enrich your place. Enrich your place means we are not just focused on the grape or on the wine, but you try to make the, your ecosystem, your place, healthier, richer, more complex of life in order to supply, if we can say, the better environment of growing for your plants. This is why we have the animals. This is why we grow, we, we plant different cultivations. And this is why we try to don't be too much uh, intense model of uh, cultivation. And this uh, focus, this point of view, move your sight from the grape to the, to the bigger picture. There is not just the grape, there is much more around the vine. And if the, what is around the vines will be healthier and cleaner and rich of life, for sure your plants will, will be in, uh, let's say in a, in a shape and in a, in a circumstance to make better grape. To thrive, they, you know, they, if, if the whole environment and the whole system works together in synergy, the grapes, yeah. they, you know, the plants, they thrive and they make good wines. Yeah, know, that's so. similar to human, no? If you are a person that live in a good place and you have good food, a good education, you are trained in a good sense, uh, probably you, you will be close to give your best. Exactly. If, if something doesn't work, if you are, if you live under pollution, I don't know, or under uh, have uh, uh, you mean some healthiness? Of course, your performance will be less great, and and this is yeah. a, and this is the base because richer for me means better. Yeah, more animals, more microorganisms, more plants means always better, and when you have all this interaction of energy into the soil in around the plants between plants and animals between us and the plants and between between all the part all the living being of the uh, ecosystem of course you connect with the with the moon again you connect with the stars you connect with all the kind of energy yeah because very, this is very 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 interesting so you know it might sound naive to people that don't they're not familiar with the with this with this with this method, but you know you're a science guy because you have studied enology, wine making. You know you didn't grow up under the moon with the wolves. You wasn't ra raised by wolves. You know you you have studied. You have all the technical knowledge. So it's interesting to see how people that have studied went to university, the best university. You got really good ratings. They're trying to follow this method, you know, and, and, and it's a cost, uh, constant uh, discovery. Every day you discover something new. Every day you implement something new, you know. Uh, I'm gonna show the slides and the photos of this beautiful section, section on your website, which is the one that talks about the ecosystem. Ecosystem is a very interesting concept. It says here, ecosystem is a biological community of interacting organisms and their physical environment. So, you know, you added the beehives because, you know, they help the biodiversity, they help the, the pollination of the flowers, they help the ecosystem growing. So having the bees in a certain environment, it means that, you know, that, environment is healthy so they're a really good sign and they help the biodiversity and they help the whole nature to thrive around them you know uh yeah tell us a little bit about the eco the concept of ecosystem yeah okay uh place like montalcino but even montepulciano places with big terroir uh they should think in a way that they they're not going to ruin their own place because the beauty of the terroir, the, the high personality of those wine regions, it's very delicate because it's all about preserve the, 
the beauty that the nature did in centuries or let's say even more of centuries and uh, and this is why we we of course we are here to make business also but we have to find a way to make business in a way that we are not change our place uh, and uh, and ruin everything and let's say we borrow our place for our son and uh, yeah. and that's the place now i want to do something uh, in my field i want to do something that i'm sure that after 100 years someone else can keep going with with the same veneer or with 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 uh, with viticulture it's, you think on the big picture so you make business and yeah. you make good business yeah. because you know your winery is popular you make amazing brunellos you make amazing rosso di montalcino but you know it's you have the big picture in mind it's not just having the money now but it's you know doing something yeah. which uh it's it's you know it's it's a great thing especially the owner let, let me say a few things about the owner of the winery mr francesco Illy, you know, he started in 2003, right? So, you know, he had this concept and it was very um, enlightening of him, of his, to have this big picture in mind. And you guys are pursuing this philosophy in a beautiful, in a beautiful way. See, you have the photo of the olive trees here. Your olive trees in your property are like 300 years old or yeah. more? Yeah. You know, the, this makes you think, I mean, you know, yeah. we just uh, we just hear it now. But, you know, there's something that is going to stay here for a longer time than us. Especially yeah. especially in place where there is this perfect matching between the cultivation that we do and the quality of the place. And the people, let's say, are they expect high quality and they are ready to pay for the quality. We cannot, let's say underestimate the damage that we do to the nature farming our place and this is why because we have the solutions and because we have we could be more sustainable we we should try to make our business very long lasting treating uh, the resource that we have soil water nature in more general concept in a way that will be not killed and, uh, and this is what we do with biodynamic farming it is important to say that in Italy, for instance, in Italy and France, where biodynamic is now, you know, becoming pretty much a big thing, even bigger wineries are converting to biodynamic. You try to create an ecosystem because we are not allowed to spray too many chemicals by law. We're not allowed to add too many sulfites by the law. And we're not allowed to irrigate. So even in difficult vintages such as 2017 or this current vintage 2021, I think the results achieved by biodynamic wineries and organic wineries are better than conventional wineries. Because if you create an ecosystem that is able to nurture it itself, even on a difficult vintage, you manage to deliver healthy grapes. And this is what is surprising about, especially the first wine that we'll be tasting with Maurizio, the other guest that we have, the Vino Nobile from Croce di Febo to 2017, shows how in a difficult vintage, a biodynamic winery led by Maurizio had made a really, a really good wine, you know, so. Because vines, when are health, they have better endurance and they have better resistance to the challenge to yes. the challenging of climate or uh, let's say uh, insects or whatever yeah okay so just a couple of things we see the preparation 500 which yeah. is the manure from a dairy cow which should have given birth at least once which is collected yeah, inserted a in a in a cow's horn <laughs> and placed yeah. underground uh, so uh, tell us a little bit about this okay uh, uh steiner uh, design seven uh, big, uh, let's say eight uh, biodynamic preparation that were, let's say, each of them have a, has a different uh, purpose. And uh, those biodynamic preparations are, let's say, when you already did do good organic farming, when you already do good stuff in your fields, you know, when you need to work the ground, you, you do all the basement very well made. Mm -hmm. 
you can go ahead and you have those biodynamic preparations. Biodynamic preparations are, um, let's say, based on, on the idea that they have a message for, for the target that could be the ground or the plants or the compost. And uh, their pro he designed how those biodynamic preparations should be prepared. For example, the two most famous biodynamic preparations are the 500 prep and the 501. 500 is the typical preparation to promote promoting life and uh, life cycle and organic matter and humus cycle into the soil. And is based on the cow manure that let's say bring the energy of the cow that have a, mm -hmm. have a powerful uh, digestive process in his stomach uh, that is, let's say, uh, put in a cow horn and place underground in order to ripe and to change. This manure in six months changed completely, becoming something very similar to humus. Yeah. Let's say it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a compo it's it's a material that seems very let's say morbido soft soft and, yeah and, and it doesn't smell like poo no it's it's a completely it like forest yes yeah it's fully humus very similar to the forest humus and uh, and is spray after the steering over the soil when we spray we spray around 150 grams per hectare is you is important for you to know mm -hmm. because it's not about the quantity it's very it's quality, it's yes very, yeah it's close to the homeopathic uh, principles and say is not is a message that is not related with tones of biodynamic preparation that you spray into your vineyard because it's not fertilizer most mm -hmm. of the people get confused saying that 500 is fertilizer is not fertilizer 150 grams per hectare that brings a certain message into the soil that should promote the multiplication of the microorganism, the production of humus, and all about the organic matter in the soil. Because let's say we treat the soil like something alive. When the organic, when the soil lose the biological function, functionality, for us is desert. And this is the most scary things of farming today lose organic matter in the soil and transform our soil not anymore in a beautiful rich and complex alive organism but in a desert just a yeah. substrate and needs water chemical fertilizer to produce something 501 i will be shorter it's a it's it's another preparation but it, this is for the plants uh, this means that is is based in a mineral the quartz that is, uh, let's say, um, reducing dust and uh, uh, place underground six months, but in a different period, because yep. we're gonna uh, make the, the, the horn, um, let's say, connect with different energy, with the, with the energy of the summer and uh, with the light. And this is pride not over the ground, but over the plants. Okay. And this works like, uh, an uh, antenna hotspot, maybe. Uh, yeah, an antenna, yeah. Yeah, bringing uh, energy for the plants and uh, increasing the, the light and the quality of the light and, and all the plants' uh, philosoph philosoph physiological process working better, like uh, ripening, uh, flowering, uh, and uh, all about what happens into the plants. Very interesting, very, very interesting. Um, yeah, I wanted to show the picture of some of the protagonists at, at Podere Leriti. You know, you have Adelina, you have Sally, <laughs> you have Irina and Billy, you know, they're very important, and Camilla, the donkey from, from Amiata. They're very important for the for the ecosystem, like we say. Then you have different, you know, plants, different varieties. The two hundred years old olive trees. So you know, uh, very very beautiful, very beautiful concept. Very very interesting. And you know, I'm 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 very happy that you explained us. You know, we try to get out of that gray area that surrounds biodynamics. Sometimes you know. 
uh, it's just uh, you know a mystical halo surrounding the world biodynamics. So you imagine something you know like a wizard doing crazy tricks in the vineyard, but there's a whole philosophy, a whole concept, and uh, I think uh, you might agree with me because you obviously you're pursuing this philosophy. Biodynamic wines are much more authentic much more reliable to what the, the vintage has been, very straightforward, very immediate. And, uh, you know, it, it, this is very, very surprising. And also, which is more surprising sometimes, that even more intense in the nose as well. Very expressive. Very expressive of the terroir, of the soil of the vintage. So, you know, it, it, is, it is very, very interesting. So. I think now we can introduce Maurizio Comitini. So I will have Sebastian and Maurizio with us. Where is Maurizio? I can't find you, Maurizio. There you are. Did you see me? Hey, Maurizio. Ciao. How are you? Ciao, Sebastian. <laughs> ciao, 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 ciao. Come stai? Bene, bene. Hello. So Maurizio is a, and it's another really good friend of mine. Uh, we have the same, you know, haircut. <laughs> we have the same barber, Maurizio, I think. <laughs> so another really good friend of mine, and he makes biodynamic wine in Montepulciano. So Sebastian makes wine, biodynamic wine in Montalcino. Maurizio makes wine in Montepulciano. He makes Vino Nobile. And the winery is called Croce di Fevo. So, you know, they are, Maurizio is a good friend of mine. I know his family very well. And I know I've been following Croce di Fevo as well, uh, as, as, as well as Podere Le Ripi, all the journey that you've done. You're organic since the beginning, right, Maurizio? You've always been organic. I, I like that you're drinking wine. We are, the same. I think we are the, the second or the third organic certified wineries in Montepulciano. So I think we have uh, the certification from 2007, I, I imagine, yes. Yeah, yeah, because I, I remember ever since I started in this business, you know, you, you've you always pretty much made organic wine. Now I'm, I'm putting your Vino Nobile, which is a yeah. wine that I'm addicted to. <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, Maurizio, what do you think that, you know, because you started as organic and then you converted to a biodynamic production. Mm. So what are the results of organic first and biodynamic production applied to your wine? Because at the end, the wine, you know, the quality of the wine is the, the most important factor. So from a quality perspective, what are the improvements brought by biodynamic in your opinion? And yeah, please, <laughs> sorry. Uh, in my in my idea, like the organic farming, uh, the biodynamic farming was uh, was a step for make uh, the best grapes possible. Um, and uh, in in my experience, in my experience, starting nineteen ninety seven, something like that, and um, and we we start to to approach the biodynamic farming in 2007. Um, and, uh, but our experience is pretty different from the Ripi. Uh, we, are, we are so small and practically we work in four hectares of vineyard. So uh, it's more, uh, it's a little bit different, I, I suppose. And what, what we search uh, with the bio, biodynamic farming is to improve uh, the soil fertility by a side and to improve uh, also the biodiversity. Um, we, we are in Croce di Febo, we are pretty lucky because we work in two small clos, clo, so closed vineyards. Yeah. Um, one in uh, um, 450 meters on the sea level, the other one in 500. Um, so, but both the closed vineyards was <clears throat> practically abandoned it. And uh, like um, Sebastian told very well, um, to, 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 
have care uh, to restore a condition is much more difficult to, uh, to, to keep a, a situation. So yeah. when we start and uh, uh, we was pretty lucky because the, both the closet don't succumb to the um, industrialization farming uh, that made with uh, um, fertilizer, glyphosate, yeah. all these things, bad thing. Um, essentially, uh, what, what I saw uh, in the first step, uh, working in, by inorganic and the second step working biodynamic farming is, uh, is uh, to have vineyards like uh, uh, um, able to, uh, to react to the condition much better than uh, in conventional farming. Yeah, okay. This is great. This is great. I'm so happy to have both of you online. So now, if you don't mind, Sebastian and Maurizio, we have some questions from our friends and members online, so you can activate your video. Okay. Who wants to talk first? You guys have the unique opportunity of asking questions to two winemakers from Montalcino and Montepulciano. So I take this chance. Okay, here we are. Anybody questions? Are you on? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, one, one of the questions I have is I notice that um, the, uh, one of the suggestions and recommendations in terms of opening the wine is to open it up for, in some cases, two hours, three hours mm -hmm. to open it up. Now, that's something yeah. that I haven't seen in some of the other wines, which are not biodynamic, I must say. Mm -hmm. So there must be something about the biodynamic process that the winemaker is making these recommendations. So the so, question is why? Thank you. Uh, so I think Maurizio can reply to this question because before this live video, we were WhatsApping. So I think Maurizio, this is for you. Uh, <laughs> that, that's, I, I think is an answer, but not only for biodynamic. Uh, or, wine grower, okay? I, I, I hope Sebastian is agree. Uh, I think uh, it, it, there is a, a two way to work uh, essentially, okay? In, in a wineries. Um, you can work on the oxidation side and work on the reduction side. So to keep okay. the, um, from the oxygen or manage the oxygen during the wine cellar, uh, during the wine making process. So what, what I like, uh, not only like wine grower, but also like a customer, because um, don't forget that uh, for, for me, I, I'm a, a drinker of wine and show you that. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Cheers to That's that. good. Working That's good. in a reduction, um, in the reduction way, um, essentially the wine, don't know very well the oxygen. So everything of the wine is on the bottle. So uh, you have to um, start the relationship with the oxygen a little bit before that you drink the wine, okay? Okay. And, yeah. and I, I want to know the, the uh, Sebastian opinion about that. <laughs> very curious. Hey. Uh, for me, let's say, uh, oxygen is a friend of life. Doesn't exist environment without a oxygen, oxygen where life exists. If you think of the water, or if you think of the soil, where in the soil there is not air, soil get die. When the water doesn't have air inside, the fish gonna die. And, and the wine is very simple. When a wine is a well-made and is clean and is full of energy, oxygen, it's, it's just enhancing this beauty. And, uh, and this is why we suggest to open the wine a bit early, but it's also very beautiful. Have the patient to taste the wine through this contact with the air, because you're gonna taste three or four wines at least. Yes. yes. When a wine is full of chemical and when a wine is, let's say, 
come from, comes from high manipulations in terms of wine making. Mm -hmm. You're gonna see that the wine after half hour, one hour in contact with the air, it gonna fall down. Let's say it's gonna lose the freshness. It's gonna uh -huh. get tired of the air. This is because chemical that is that doesn't have nice relationship with air. Mm. Very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. Or politically correct. Yeah. It's passionate about this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, very politically correct. I think somebody's <laughs> gonna sue us live now. <laughs> One of the big wineries is gonna sue me tonight, and it's from <laughs> Sebastian. You're gonna. I'm gonna pay. I'm gonna pay the, the, the lawsuit, but you gonna repay me wine, okay? You don't open your wine to give customers that. <laughs> okay, Henry Law has raised the hand. So please, Henry, my friend. Uh, this is, uh, earlier you earlier you spoke about the uh, governing bodies the organic process it, were you specifically talking about uh, Italy or is it a process that everyone uses the same hold on, process? hold on a second Harry just a second because there was a confusion probably in the audio can you please repeat the question my friend Earlier, when you spoke about the governing bodies that govern the uh, process of organic or biodynamic, is that specifically in Italy or is the worldwide process the same for all countries? Yes, it defines the same. Yeah, uh, organic is worldwide recognized and the standards are very similar all around the world. Biodynamic is actually certificated only through private association that could be based in uh, Europe or America. And there is a biggest association named Demeter. It's just a private association and they have a standard with locals, uh, let's say controller, let's say, and local standard that someone for milk, someone for wine, for oil, for grain, and, uh, but they're not recognized by the law. Let's say they're recognized yeah. by the law, but it's not a government standard. It's private. Like I would say, Sebastian yeah. is certificating that Maurizio is following the Sebastian standard. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you very much, Harry. Thank you, guys. Anybody else? Questions? Steven? I see Steven and Davidia with sure, their beautiful drinking hats from the Parbacco <laughs> Wine Club. So it, it seems to me that there's a tremendous sense of history with biodynamic wines. And uh, Sebastian, if I'm looking at your etiquette here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So this is hearkening back to Ulysses. And, uh, and the other one, this is stuff we got from the wine club. This is uh, Francesco shipped this out what, last yeah. year sometime or, or the year yeah. before. Yeah. And even though you're incorporating newer techniques, uh, it seems like this is, this is the kind of wine that people would have made in ancient times and in, in medieval times. Could, yeah, could I, you both comment upon that, please? Uh, there is a, I'm gonna go first, and not that we'll leave you all the time, Maurizio and Francesco. Uh, there is a beautiful uh, quote by a master of, uh, I would say some of the best wine in the world, and say we should know, let's say, wine making uh, science, let's say, enology, to don't use it. That's why, for me, is important. It's you cannot do biodynamic without without knowing the techniques, the science of wine making. We should know it, but just because we don't want to use it. And, uh, and this is why biodynamic is something old that brings a huge heritage of knowledge and sensitivity, especially about the nature uh, and uh, collect by the ancestors. And this is what we have to keep in mind with the modern uh, awareness that comes from the science. But we cannot use the science to change or fake or have a manipulation of the wine or saving costs, doing more profit or having wine that are projected. That's, do you understand me? Yep. 
very, very, very interesting and very, you know, you're very philosophical today, Sebastian. <laughs> and no, but it's 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 true because you know there's a whole there's a whole concept behind, you know, like some nowadays, you know, uh in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, a lot of wineries that were looking for immediate profit, you know, that were just trying to make and they made good wines, but some of the wines that have been made on that era. I'm just referring to what I know, what I know. I'm referring to Italian wines. Some of the wines you taste them now and they are they have faded already. While you know, I think by dynamic wines, these ones will be able to last. This is why on the wine club, on the platinum level, on the higher tier of the Parbacco wine club level, you have uh, by dynamic Chianti Classico Reserva from 1998 from Querciabella, which is one of the first wineries to apply biodynamic uh, farming to to winemaking in in Tuscany and it's very interesting to see how a Chianti Classico from 1998 made with organic with actually biodynamic uh, philosophy and approach to farming is now just in beautiful beautiful shape it can go for 20 30 years so what people were saying 20 years ago that biodynamic wines wouldn't last in the long term they were totally wrong about it because I think the wines that we are drinking, that we'll be drinking now, they will last for a long time, I think. So, yeah. Okay. Beautiful. So, any other questions? Sebastian will be with us shortly because I kept you up for a long time. You have to wake up very early tomorrow morning to work in the, <laughs> in the, in the vineyard. Anybody else has a question? I have a question, Francisco. Hey, Eric, how are you doing, my friend? Doing great, thanks. Uh, Sebastian, the, the question is for you. A few weeks ago, my wife and I had the pleasure of uh, visiting your, your, your uh, vineyard. And it was for, for everybody else on the call, if you have the opportunity, I highly recommend it. It was a very, very interesting and very enjoyable experience. And, and the facility is and the, and the views are, are beautiful. Um, I grew up on a, on a dairy farm, so I have much experience with cow manure. So my question is that technique with the, the bull, the, the, the cow horn, is that unique to you or is that a common, did you come up with that idea or is that a common practice with other vineyards? No, the, the cow, uh, the biodynamic preparation based on the cow manure, it's, has been uh, invented by Steiner hundred years ago, more or less. And this is typical of the biodynamic method because it's the only way to produce this preparation. But in terms of, um, let's say, in biodynamic, we are also very committed with compost. And uh, compost in Tuscany, but most of the place of Europe is based in manure that mostly came from cow, but could, can come also from other kinds of animals. And biodynamic really explain you well how you can transform the, the, the manure in a compost and humus, let's say, you know, it's part of the same conversion. And this is why what happened in the horn during the winter time for the little amount of manure inside the horn, it's, uh, it's replicated in the pile of compost that we should have to produce organic matter for our vineyards. Good organic matter transform. And, and this is why, just to close the, the, the explanation, oh, uh, above the first two preparation, 500 and 501, there are seven preparations that are based in plants uh, principles, in medical plants, that are be, have been designed to help the organic matter to transform in the compost pile. Because this transformation, let's say, is, is, is fundamental in biodynamic to provide organic matter into the soil. Great, thank you. So also Maurizio, do you do the, the whole horn thing in, your, in, in the vineyard, the preparation, the 500? If you are biodynamic, you have to do the 500. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> or, or, or you do or you are not. Uh, but just for um, in, in large a little bit, uh, 
the, the, the 500, um, the, Sebastian told this before, it's like, it's, it's a sort of message, okay? Uh, the 501 is a message for the outside part. So the vegetable, um, in, 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 is in, the, the leaves are engaged on the 501. In the 500, the engagement is for the roof and for everything is under the soil. And in particular, is we have to think to 500 like a, a starter. So it's not exactly a compost. It's something more than a compost. Something able to, uh, go, to give a good example to the rest of the natural. So it's uh, for improve the life, improve the fertility in general of the soil. So the cow became something else, not only a humus, uh, became uh, um, with, the, with the cow mood, uh, the cow um, soul and the um, energy uh, of, the, of the planets of the moon, able to improve the soil fertility. So it's like a starter, finally. Yeah. This is, this is so exciting. I, 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 you know, I'm just like a kid in the kindergarten. I'm just so happy and you know, we are learning and we are just embracing the whole you know, aspects of this, type of, of this type of farming. So Sebastian, I think you can go now. I kept you up for a long time. I know you are early sleeper, I'm, so I'm, I don't I'm, want to. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry to miss you the best out the tasting, but uh, yeah. I know where you live and where Maurizio live. I can come okay. and drink your wine. <laughs> yeah, so definitely, definitely, yeah. <laughs> Great. No, Se Sebastian, thank you. Thank you very much. Grazie mille. Davvero. You, you're a really good friend. Having and, fun. Uh, but we'll, we'll do another one, probably just for, you know, probably Podere Le Ripi. So we'll taste the wine, a proper online tasting with, with the wines will be very different, very, very important to taste the wines as well. Now we taste Maurizio's wines. So, Great. You know, we, Have fun we have done a lot of talking. <laughs> Grazie yeah. a tutti. Ciao. Ciao, Sebastian. Ciao. Ciao, ciao, ciao. Grazie. Okay. Any, any other questions? Or we can talk about the winery, Maurizio's winery briefly. Uh, yeah, we can talk about Maurizio's wineries. And then if you have other questions, you can make them afterwards or during the tasting. Yeah? What do you think about that? We cool? Okay. Awesome. It's so beautiful to see your beautiful faces in the screen. Really. Yeah. You see Mark and Diane right there. Hello, guys. That's Bill. Hi, William. It's great to see you guys. Yeah. Okay. So Maurizio, I wanted to show a video of your, of your winery. Okay. Yeah? Okay. Because I found this online and it's very, very nice. So you can, while, yeah, this is, this is you. <laughs> <laughs> I have a drink. I have a drink. So it's not. Yeah. This is my, my son. Yeah. Yeah, but, this is Enrico. Enrico, see. So, uh, just for tell you something about the wineries, uh, my wineries. How are wineries? Because it's a family business. Uh, I I have my two sons with me, um, Enrico, that he he, he stomp the grapes in the in the vet now, um, and the other one is Alberto. Um, my wineries is very small. It's only four hectare of vineyards uh, in the southern part of Montepulciano. Um, we are lucky because uh, as I told you before, we work in two closed vineyards, so not in contact with, uh, with other and um, vineyards into very, uh, really particularly uh, terroir uh, with very different soil. Uh, soil and San Giovese are a nice combo able to, to give something of unique sometime. And uh, we work, we work uh, in a sustainable way by every time. Uh, my, I'm not born in a winery, in a one, one, one family, uh, mm -hmm. and not in a farm family. So this was my, my feeling, my attitude. And uh, I, I became a farmer 
uh, now 25 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, the time. This is your son Alberto, by the way, the one that we see on screen now. Yeah. Is a is a small, small chef. Now he's in, in Trentino Alto Adige. He's he working at Locanda Margon. Oh, nice. Yeah. Until nice. Feb. Now then he come back in Montepulciano for do something <laughs> in the vineyard. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so um, we we work uh, in a very uh, we I, I'm I'm not ashamed to tell uh, we are handcraft and farmer absolutely um, this is what 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 you say we call it a boutique winery now yeah so it's a fancier it's a fancier way to see like a boutique winery I think my winery is like a a polyculture wineries. Yeah. So we 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 have vineyards. Of course, is the focus uh, is the is the viticulture. But we have also olive growth. We have a very nice vegetable garden, and uh, we 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 have care of our uh, surround. Uh, everything surround the vineyards is important for us. Um, in my approach in farming uh, uh, before the biodynamic was important to, to reach the target. And reach the target was for me to have the best grapes possible and as pure as possible. And this is a very important point for me, uh, the, wine I, the, the wine I love, the wine I like. And we're seeing the beautiful video on the background of your family working. I, I don't see you working in the video, actually. Were you shooting the video or you're not working at all? <laughs> I, I shoot the video. <laughs> Okay. Okay, I that's a nice way to put it. There is the proof that works sometimes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah, it it is beautiful to see how wine is made in a very, as you said, you know, handicraft way. Plus, like, you know, artisans of wine. You know, oh, this is you. You are drinking. The, I, I'm the taster. You know. Okay. Okay. You, you get the final you, job. Have you seen the wasp on the on the on the press? <laughs> You're caught in the app right there, drinking. Yeah. The, the, the bags, the, the, the wasp are, are a part of the job. Uh, yes. When you work with uh, uh, spontaneous fermentation, uh, and the wasp and the, and the, and the bees, of course, uh, help to, to make, uh, to improve biodiversity, also for the yeast. So yep. they are part of the job. Yeah, this is this is very important. I think I, I go back to the okay to the big screen. Yes, here we are. Yeah, it, it that video is beautiful. When I saw it, I said, okay, this is gonna be on the presentation. So while Maurizio talks, we can see the vineyard. I pretty much nailed that. Well, thank you. You're very welcome. You're very welcome, guys. No, but it was very interesting to see, you know, to get the idea of the dimension of your you know boutique winery again and to see how you actually work you know you see we, we saw in the video your wife angela we seen your your sons you know and 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 the people that work with you so it, it's beautiful to see still nowadays in an important appellation such as the vino nobile to see this to have this type of products this is what my goal is as restaurant owner, as sommelier in a restaurant, as sommelier of a wine club to deliver this type of product, to deliver, to, deliver, to, to show, to give voice to, you know, uh, farms and wineries like yours, Maurizio, which make really good wines in a very, in a very beautiful way with the family working there. So the whole family's part. So, is part of the whole winemaking process. So what we were saying with Sebastian before about the ecosystem, the ecosystem of you know all the plants, all the bees, all the animals, all the insects fighting for the same goal, you have a much richer concept in your winery because you also have the family. You have the two sons, you have the wife, you're, it's, it's you, you know, the whole family working together as, you know, uh, in beautiful unison to yeah, make this yeah. high quality wine, which is very, very interesting. You know, it's very charming. I like every time to explain to the people that uh, came in the wineries, because we are so much engaged, so much engaged also in the, to, to receive the, 
the wine lover. Uh, that's, this is not a work. This is a way of life. So it's not possible to do this kind of business with four hectares making 20,000 bottles per year. Uh, this is not for business. Uh, you survive, uh, but it, it is the way how you survive. That's the point. Um, and the point, I come back to what Sebastian told before, um, is, uh, is for protect what is not our property. It's only for, it's like a, a sort of renting. For 20 here is mine, then come back to my son, and then come to my grandson. So we uh, manage our land, our vineyards, our olive growth, our vegetable garden, like if it's not exactly our. Yeah. And uh, very, very, very. In the same way, I like to uh, share this with uh, the people that came in Montepulciano for, uh, for this. I highly recommend to go and visit your winery because, you know, like uh, Chris, uh, sorry, Eric said before, he had been to Podere Le Ripi. So you guys were here about three weeks ago or something like mid-November, a month ago, about a month ago. And we went to visit some of the wineries. And then afterwards, you went to Podere Le Ripi, which is a beautiful winery. Uh, and it's very spectacular to see with your own eyes what Sebastian was saying before. It is I highly, highly recommend to go and visit Maurizio because, you know, first of all, you have the unique chance of talking to the winemaker, to get immersed into the philosophy of winemaking and to see with your own eyes and to taste with your own mouth, actually, which is the most important thing, uh, the, 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 whole, the, whole, the whole winery and the, and the products that you, guys, that, you guys, that you guys make. So very, very interesting. If there are other questions, we can do one or two questions now, and then we just finally drink the wines. No questions? Let me check. Okay. Okay, so, hey, Mark. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, here, here in California, um, biodynamic wineries, I think, are becoming a little bit more, um, I don't want to say popular, but it, I think when we talk about being stewards of the land and uh, different wineries want to ensure they're sustainable and have something to pass along and that uh, their product and, and, and the grapes live for a long, long time. Do you, are you seeing um, in Italy as well um, more and more um, vineyards converting? to first organic, then biodynamic, knowing that that the Italian soil, the Italian grape, for it to truly live for the next 500 years, the way it should be, should not all vineyard be biodynamic so that there's something to pass on uh, the, the long you know, standing tradition. Because it sounds like to me, it wasn't since maybe the last 100 years that conventional farming kind of screwed things up and now it's a return to the past so that you still have something, you know, to pass along. And then the last, the last final question is, is, uh, is France doing the same thing? And should they, and should they? <laughs> okay. There's no better person to reply this question because Maurizio has got 50% of French DNA. So. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, I, I ask in Italian to, I translate to Maurizio. Mark dice, lui vive in California, Mars lives in California. Uh, and he says that in California is becoming more, I would say, trendy. Non ho capito. Uh, the, in California sta diventando un trend di avere aziende eh. biodinamiche, ok? Questo trend c'è anche in Italia? E lui dice, anche in Francia, quindi praticamente. Ok, translated in Italian, let's uh, just for give you uh, an idea, I'm 50% French, and of course I'm uh, in a, differently from uh, Sebastian. I'm uh, in a certification of uh, biodynamic farming, and my um, uh, private association is French. Okay, uh, and I 
now we're very engaged in the association. It's like a trust, okay? Only winemakers are inside. Uh, so a lot of uh, wineries want to entry now. Um, like uh, five years ago, a lot of wineries want to become organic. Uh, so now it's very fancy. Fancy is the Trendy, word? yeah. Trendy, fancy. So everyone want, everyone want to become sustainable, biodynamic, uh, organic. This is normal. Uh, when uh, the, the, in Italia we saw El Carro del Vincitore. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like, you know, it's like it's became, it became a fashion now. It became something that, you know, but, but at least it's interesting to see, to integrate your answer, um, to give a wider answer to Mark. I'm, I'm very happy that also California is starting to lean towards that direction because California, well, you know, winemakers in California are allowed to use a higher amount of sulfides. They, you know, they can irrigate as well. Like we are not allowed to irrigate. So that's a different, different concept. Like Napa was conceived in the beginning. And now I'm happy to see that now what well, California is heading towards the direction of making uh, organic and biodynamic wines. I hope that is not just, not just a fashion. I hope that is also, you know, realized. Can I finish? Uh, Sorry. I, uh, it's not interesting if it's trendy or not, because if you want to become organic or biodynamic, you have to renounce to, to uh, um, work with standard, with some standard, and the final result is you make less pollution. Less yep. pollution. So uh, you understand what I mean? <laughs> yes. It's very a cynical. Uh, it's cynical, but you know, it's, it's cynical, but, but we on the big picture is amazing. Damo <laughs> vinto. If, if, if we all convert into biodynamic, we, we have won, all of us. Yes, I, I totally agree with you. But also France, I mean, in France, the biodynamic movement is huge. It started actually biodynamic approach to, um, um, you know, apply to winemaking started probably, you know, in between Europe, Australia, South Africa. But the big, the big, you know, boost has been given by Lower Valley mm. and by France. France. You know, uh, they set the standard of biodynamic winemaking, of organic winemaking, you know, in, in Lower Valley and in the rest of France. Mm. We have to be honest. We love Italian wines and I love, I'm, I'm all about Italian wines, but we have to recognize, you know, the, 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 the great help, the great improvements brought by the French winemakers. And then it spread it in Italy, Austria, and Germany. And I'm happy that now it's spreading in California as well. I'm aware that, you know, it's now more California winemakers are starting to convert to this, to this, you know, to this system of, to this philosophy of winemaking, which is great. So yeah, to sum up what we say, we hope that it's not just a fashion that is gonna last for the next five years, but we hope that we understood that we can continue to spray glyphosate. We can continue to spray chemicals in the vineyards. They're going to stay in the soil for decades and decades. We have to start working our asses off in the vineyards in order to achieve really good results. Sorry for the strong language, but <laughs> this is, you know, sums up pretty much everything. So you have Henry again, please. Henry, he raised his hands. Oh, I'm sorry, if, if this is Michael, and I know people want to get on to tasting, I just one quick question. I wanted to ask uh, Mark, we're in Northern California near Napa Valley out of Sacramento. So I was wondering what part of California Mark was in. Uh, yes, uh, uh, I spent half my time in um, Los Angeles, but I really enjoyed my time in Healdsburg. So I'm in uh, Sonoma County there. There are a few um, biodynamic wineries there and organic wineries there that uh, um, that I like to, to visit. Yeah. Oh, good to know. Good to know. Thanks. Nice. I, I love when the members interact with each other. I, I just love it. Yeah. And please uh, say hello to Linda. Please pass along the hello to Linda. This is oh, yo, she, oh, she's online. Yeah, Linda's your yeah. cousin, right? Yes. Okay. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Hi, Linda. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. 
Okay, now we have, oh, that's Hi, Scott. Michael. <laughs> that's a family Hi, reunion, Michael. it's beautiful. Hi, Michael. Hello. Okay, we have, there you oh, go. She... I see my really good friend, Hagai and Scott from, yeah. Ciao, Francesco. Ciao. Hi, my friend. It's so great to see you guys from Detroit, so Michigan. Question. Yes, Scott. So I'm wondering how the biodynamic wines do in the various competitions versus the wines that are made with chemicals. The ratio, in, like in Italy, to say which one wins more or worse? You don't have sentido niente. Like, are you asking like the percentage of biodynamic wines compared to? No, no. I'm wondering in the competitions, in like you know. When you take yeah. wines to be to compete against each other, how are the biodynamic wines doing versus the other wines? Yeah, uh, Maurizio. More awards. Do you? Frank, so we... the um, sta chiedendo quali sono le complicazioni? Oh, really? Then come on. Quali oh, sono le complicazioni di, del fare vino un sistema biodinamico comparato con quello convenzionale? So what are the complications of the biodynamic approach? compared to conventional approach the timing. in terms of when there's difficulties. Uh, for, when, you work with an, when, when you work with an ecosystem, uh, the, the reaction of the ecosystem are not uh, exactly pr pr predictable. So you can, you can need two, three, four, five here for, for find the balance. And, uh, and then, of course, depend what, what exactly are your, your target, your goal. So, uh, you know what I mean? Uh, so if, if you search to be uh, an expression of uh, your identity, uh, or you pretend to become an expression of something else. So, yeah. It's not easy to answer to your question. Is yeah, it? Uh, but but I think the, the I I misinterpreted no, misinterpret no, the question. The, the the question is how they how do they do in competition? Because I didn't hear very yeah. well. How did they do in competition? Like by dynamic wines, for instance. I don't know how they are rated by Robert Parker or ah. international like mm. wine spectator like ratings of international. Yeah, sorry, I just misunderstood. I didn't hear very well. Didn't hear that. So now I understand. Uh, so for be honest, I'm not very interested on that. That's that's the most beautiful <laughs> and most. That's a so, fully organic, biodynamic answer right there. So, uh, in, in, the five, in the hundred first wine of Parker, I buy only one wine. Okay, okay, <laughs> that's 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 the think. most biodynamic unfiltered <laughs> question I've ever the answer I've ever. I, I could ever desire for. For me, Parker is the best. <laughs> but he's changed a little bit. Monica Larner is doing a good job lately. But some of the wines have been, like we say in the business, Parkerized. <laughs> Once they get 100 points, they raise the price and, you know, they, just, they increase the production. But, but whoa, this is just, you know, general, general thoughts. So, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, Scott, that I misinterpreted your question. And thank you, Mark and Diane, for writing it down because I didn't, I didn't hear very well. So, okay, shall we go with the wine tasting? What do you guys think? Is it time to drink or we just talk? We just do the talking for tonight. <laughs> okay, here we are. So the first wine, this is only for the bronze and silver members of the wine club. The Croce di Febo. 17. Vino Nobile di Montepulciano, 2017. Yeah. So, and now we are going to taste with our own taste buds all everything we said about biodynamics. So, in a difficult vintage like 2017, which was one of the most difficult vintages ever recorded, because we had in April we had the frost. So, the temperatures went below zero after the bad burst. So it was very, you know, some winemakers that lost big part of the harvest. And then there was a very, a very big drought, very long drought. It didn't rain for about six months. 
up until October, but at that time, the harvest was already done. The grapes were already harvested. So, and the temperatures were really high. So it was a very, very challenging year. And I think conventional wines in 2017, they're not expressive and sometimes they're very harsh on the tannin, but your wine has a beautiful drinkability and a very nice, it's very approachable, it's very, it's very complex and it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful Vino Nobile. So, you know, and now we're gonna go with the tasting. So very, very interesting. It's gonna be very, a very educational taste. Okay, let's you go. Let's go with the, with the color, which is a beautiful red ruby color with a very nice intensity. But it's pretty transparent, which is the beautiful color of the of the of the San Giovanni. Okay, let's uh, let's see the smell. Hmm. Very nice. Um, you have that kind of you know intensity of the 2017 vintage of a uh, warm vintage, obviously, with the stunningly intense bouquet and a beautiful complex bouquet that opens with. Um, a beautiful fruity side of uh, like a maraschino cherry, like a ripe, a ripe uh, cherry and currants as well. And a floral touch of violet that is typical of the, of the Sangiovese. A beautiful touch, you know, floral touch. And then there's kind of a herbal touch as well, uh, like of aromatic herbs. And a nice aroma of leather as well, so. What is intriguing is this character of kind of iron, like a ferrous type of character, which is, I, I believe, Maurizio, your soil is very rich in uh, iron. Am I correct? The, the vineyards. Yeah, the vineyards. In 2017, was a, as, as you uh, remind, was very difficult vintage. Yeah. Um, we we uh, fortunately don't have problem with with, with frost, but unfortunately, we have so much problem with wild boar. <laughs> oh, yes. And uh, yes. we make uh, 30, 35% less of the production um, for, for this. So finally, on 2017, we don't make any crew, so no Pietra, no Amore Mio, but only the blend of Vino Nobile di Montepulciano. So we have a 50% of Sangiovese from Pietra del Diavolo and 50% yeah. of Sangiovese for the other vineyards, Cappuccini. Okay, so you didn't make the reserva, but all the all the, um, all, the all the grapes from the usual usually destined for reserva, they are in the Vino Nord. So, yes. Yeah. And okay. the iron and the iron are uh, a character um, from uh, the vineyards Cappuccini. Yeah, because you have this type of ferrous type of, you know, this touch of like blood or like raw meat, so like a steak tartare. Yes, yes, exactly. I know it's going to be very gross. Probably if you guys, some of you guys are vegan, please forgive me. But this is, you know, how we technically describe the wines that, you know, sometimes you can tell when a wine is made in a ferrous type soil because it's got this type of, you know, game aspect to it, like gamey aspect to it, like raw meat. And if the wine is evolved, this probably is gonna age, if, it, if you age this wine 20 years, probably it's gonna smell like barbecue a little bit, probably like steak, <laughs> who knows, who knows? So it's, it's very beautiful, very intriguing. You know, it's a very, very beautiful aroma and it's very complex to it. There's also this kind of like a pencil, aspect to it, like a pencil case to it, which is due to the graffiti, you know, like, you know, the smell of a pencil case that reminds you of the kindergarten at primary school, you know, kind, of, kind of reminds me of that. So very interesting. How about Polvere da Sparo in Vino Americano? Polvere da Sparo? It's like, yeah, you say graffiti or like powder, like gunpowder, gun gunpowder, yeah, yeah. gunpowder, yeah, exactly. Very interesting. Let's see the let's see the, the the palette of it. Let's taste the wine. And what what is funny on for my Vino Nobile on 2017 is the is the is the is the, is the, the terminal part of the wine. Uh, that's the that's 
came from exactly what, what I searched uh, in biodynamic farming, uh, a sort of resilience of the, of the vine. Uh, normally, uh, this is uh, in Tuscany, but in France, in California, when, you, when, when, when it's very warm, the acidity decreases. Uh, in, uh, when, in biodynamic farming, uh, the root can survive or so react much better to the condition and the acidity rests. And yes. uh, what is fun for, uh, what is exceptional for my, in my opinion for 2017 is this final, the hand of the wine. The acidity, the is freshness so, is so present. It's so fresh. That's it's very fresh and it's very pleasant, very, you know, mineral. You have this solid disability that reminds me of a little bit of iron, a little bit like a steak tartare, beautiful freshness, and also, you know, the sapidity, savory, beautiful and finish, long lasting. You don't think a sort of uh, salimaldo? Yeah. Yeah. Um, like that kind of. Um, that sapidity that is not that is a little bit too aggressive. This is very gentle, very subtle, very, very long, very long lasting, very long lasting. It it, it is very 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 interesting to see how in a, in a in a difficult vintage, in difficult conditions, like we said, you you know your vines they thrive and they made this beautiful wine because, like you said, in biodynamic production, you know the roots the vines, they have to survive. So they have to adjust, they have to adapt their, themselves to the extreme conditions. In conventional farming, whenever there's a difficult time, if it rains too much, if it doesn't rain, if you intervene every time, if you spray them with chemicals because of, you know, to protect them from diseases, if you irrigate them when it doesn't rain, they are not forced to survive. In biodynamic, they're forced, they thrive, they're forced to give their best. And in the difficult vintage like 2017 or probably 2014, you have a beautiful result, you know? And this is, this is why I selected your wine for the wine club, the 2017, difficult vintage, but beautiful, beautiful result to underline how you can reach certain results by paradox, only if you create a beautiful environment in which the plants, they can thrive and give their best. The so, yeah. idea, and this is not so, not so common, uh, that think to the vine like uh, children. So <laughs> when you want to educate it, your children, you don't give them what they want you give them what they need. And this is the big different point. <laughs> I see a lot of people are nodding now. They're doing, yes, I got a lot of people that have families, you know? <laughs> this, is, this is a beautiful, a beautiful analogy, Maurizio. It's true. I don't have any kids, but uh, I'm so, I, I totally agree with you. Not yet, not yet. Not yet, not yet. I, I, I think, you know, I have too many things to do. I can, I couldn't be a farmer. That it requires a lot of time. I'm more into drinking. But your father have a wine, a vegetable garden. I remember, no? Yes, yes. And I don't know, but I go to the vegetable garden. I pick a tomato if I need a tomato for my house, <laughs> and that's all the work that I'm involved into. <laughs> I'm a guy. You know, I'm a salesperson. There's winemakers and there's salespeople. I'm a salesperson. So. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's see if there's any questions. Yeah, Mark wrote, next trip, let's plan a wild boar hunting trip and enjoy the meal of wild boars. That's a good, that's a good thing because Maurizio, okay, okay, we cannot say that because technically we, we're not allowed to hunt. We're not allowed to, you can only hunt during the hunting season and in certain areas but Maurizio's got big problems with wild boars in 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 the vineyard so you know but maybe sometimes it can happen that the wild boar 
jumps on the bullet, right? You know that. There is yes, a you said that once. Board. Suicide board. Yeah, the suicidal board that, you know, board. you randomly shoot the gun and he jumps. Exactly. How yeah. will tell you that? <laughs> yeah, shit happens, you know. It just happened. <laughs> now we joke, but on 2007 was really a mess. And for this reason, during the winter, we put uh, electric fences everywhere. Now, uh, this is not completely fixed, okay? So every day we have to fight with, uh, with the animal. Yeah. We, we don't, now from 2017, we have less problem. Not 35% of production, so. Wow. Five percent, ten percent. So we stop. Wow, that's crazy. But okay, let's go to the reserve. Okay. Well, actually, I had prepared. Hold on a sec. I had prepared the. Hold on a sec. The technical, the technical uh, details of the wines, but I forgot about. Like you know. You know the wine online tastings I've done. Whenever I taste the wine, I present the technical aspects of the wine. Hold on a sec. Mm -hmm. My computer is so slow. <laughs> it's also, yeah. Question. Tell them I have a question. Put your hand up. Okay. Okay. Yeah, this was the technical information about the previous wine. Yeah, the grapes I didn't mention. They are. Sangiovese, and then there's Canaiolo, Ciliegiolo, Colorino, and Mamolo, which are wow. the best friends of the Sangiovese in Vino Nobile and Chianti Classico Appellation. The altitude is 450, actually, to 500 meters above sea level. Aging is 18 to 24 months in small oak barrels and cask, and six months in the bottle. Yeah. And the soil, yes, is clay, calcareous, ferruginous, uh, with the fossil rich structure. And also, SO2 sulfites very very low 20 milligrams per liter almost nothing which is good okay now we're gonna go with the next wine which is the Reserva 2015 Amore Mio very mm -hmm. romantic name Amore Mio is my love my dear my love. 2015 there is a mistake there there is a mistake on the technical sheets which one the bottles are not 1,800. How many? 1,300. Okay, even more exclusive. <laughs> even more exclusive. <laughs> <For me. laughs> I just, yes, yes. I just took it because on the website you say that you make an average in between 1,000 and 2,000 bottles. Yes. So I just put 2015 them. was only 1,300. Okay, I should have contacted you. Okay. Okay, so yeah, this is you know the the description as well, the technical description of this wine and the price 48 euros as well, which is important as well. Another important aspect, otherwise, we just talk about the philosophy. Let's talk about money a little bit. <laughs> okay, so yeah, let's go back to the full screen. Okay, I think you should see my ugly face now. Okay, so let's let's you know let's see let's see what we have now in the glass. The color is another red ruby color, but with higher intensity. Uh, yeah, you it's can tell this, is reserva. this has been aged for you know kind of a longer time. A thicker texture to it as well. Good. Beautiful color, very very in inviting, you know. Uh, let's see the smell of it. Yeah, you can feel the warmth of the 2015 vintage. You have, you know, I feel a lot of the, the, the beautiful and intense and intense aroma. Uh, I, I, I can feel it in the glass. Again, we have uh, like a cherry under spirit, like a cherry under alcohol, uh, soaked in alcohol. Very ripe black currants. To this one, there's a more like introspective touch to it of like uh, dark chocolate and um, tobacco and a herbal uh, touch of 
almost like sage to it, like a Mediterranean scrub uh, touch to it. Beautiful intensity. I think, you know, very neat, very elegant, very precise. It's a beautiful, beautiful reserva. Sorry, uh, I, I have the return of some audio here. Hold on a sec. Yep. Okay. So let's taste the wine. I love it. Awesome. So the palate is very coherent with the with the bouquet, with this, you know, cherry, great intensity, but incredible elegance, a quintessential elegance to it. And, and the structure is very balanced. You have the warmth in the beginning, but this beautiful freshness, like the previous wine that we've tasted. Beautiful acidity that is very refreshing, elegant. You know, it makes you drink this wine with a light heart, you know, because this wine goes down really quickly, beautifully, very gently. Uh, this, the, the acidity is a very important aspect of your wine. And this is, I really believe that this wine can go for 25 years easily without, without, without even blinking. So, you know, beautiful freshness. And the tannin is very gentle. It's firm, but it's very creamy. And it's, you know, spread it in the whole mouth and in the whole tongue. So very creamy, very juicy tannin as well. And a very long lasting finish in which you have this type of, you know, ferrous, again, this minerality that reminds me a little bit of an iron, a little bit like a steak tartare, or probably like a raw steak, you know, a grilled steak, very rare very rare uh, 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 Florentine steak, which is beautiful. You know, there's a beautiful balance, a beautiful harmony of all the components. And again, in the finish, as I'm talking now, I have these red fruits again, these like red fruits, these uh, cherry soaked in spirit, these, you know, black currant in, in, in the taste. So very, very refreshing, beautiful, you know, it's got a full body, but it's very beautiful balance to it. So very, very nice. And I remember when I asked you if you had any suggestion for the wine pairing, you say the Brazilian song, the wine pairing with this wine, Agarota di Paema, the girl from Ipanema. But I, I think it's going to be with the Frank Sinatra voice, the version that Frank Sinatra did of this song. Very warm, very gentle, very classy, elegant and balanced to it. You know, very, I think that's a perfect wine and music pairing. I think... Yeah, <laughs> beautiful wine, Maurizio. Thank you. For real, for real. What is uh, interesting to remember when we, we spoke about uh, Amore Mio and in general is uh, is is not is a single vineyard. So the big differences between the Vino Nobile and the, and the Amore Mio is that the Vino Nobile is a blend of two closed vineyards. And in Amore Mio, you have the best Sangiovese of the vintage uh, from one of the uh, vineyards. So it's a really, uh, you know, you, 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 we spoke about as small pieces of land. <laughs> yeah, really small pieces of land. Yeah, yeah, but you know, the fact that you have such a small area to manage it means that you can control on the quality of the vines, on the quality of the soil. You can do a better job. You can be present 24 seven in the daily life of the vineyard in the life cycle, the annual life cycle. So, you know, it, it, this, is, this is how you manage to have a craft wine because there's a lot of work, a lot of knowledge. I, I bet, you know, each one of the vines that you have in the vineyard. You know, everyone, I, I think you have a name for each one of them. <laughs> yes. More or less. <laughs> we'll see in the future. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think if you guys have any questions, uh, I'll let Maurizio go because it's, it's, it's getting pretty late. Because, you know, well, when I you have, have fun, time flies. In, uh, in Milano, uh, Nebbiolo versus Sangiovese. So it's a, it's a nice <laughs> <The> one. <laughs> 
Tomorrow I, I, I have a visit in Sassicaia, Tenuta San Guido. Yeah, the most iconic winery, one of the most iconic wineries in Italy. I have a visit and I'm waking up like 6 a.m. tomorrow. Not easy to, to, to go in Sassicaia, not easy. Yes. yes, like tomorrow I was very busy, I couldn't go. But they told me two months ago, they told me, okay, this is the only day, the only hour that you can visit the winery, take it or leave it. And I'm like, whatever, I mean... So I'm driving there tomorrow morning with Mary, with my girlfriend. Then we go there, we taste the wine, and then we come back, back to work for lunch, probably. I don't know. But, you know, it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. So <laughs> It's not very common to go in Saskia. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I will let you know. I'll keep you everyone posted on Instagram. I'm going to post a lot of things tomorrow. I'm going to be very social tomorrow. <laughs> you guys have any questions that you can... Ask Maurizio and then we, we let you go, Maurizio. No, we didn't hurry. Well, there. Hold on a second. We, we can hear you. I activated your audio. Unmute. Okay. Can you yes. hear me now? Yes. Okay. Yes. So my question is that I saw you were drinking the wine through the COVID. Corvin, is that how you say the Corvin that you pour the wine with? Oh, the, uh, the, 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 the Corvin. There's this Corvin. Guy. Yeah, yeah. So we have that as well. Now, how, how does that let the wine breathe for two hours, two, three hours? Yeah. It does not. Can I, can I open this tonight and put the Corvin in, but that's not allowing it to breathe? Well, I've, I've, I've opened this with the Corvin quite a few weeks ago. So it's like you, you've opened uh, the bottle like one hour 30 because you know Corvin it 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 doesn't of course it keeps the wine right uh, really right. well but you start the oxidation process which is lower like if you open the bottle if you uncork the bottle the bottle is going to last maximum 48 hours with the Corvin that process it's spread in like three four months I've opened this right. like three, four hours ago yeah yeah. Ah. Like, like, okay. sorry. Uh, two, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Yes, yes. But these are okay. long-lasting bottles. <laughs> so I can't blast it tonight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Stephen and Davidia, hold on, Maurizio. We have a last question, and then I'll, and then I'll let you go. So, Maurizio, what is the what is the problem with the Chingiale? Do they eat the, uh, the, the vines? Do they tear up the vines? What, what is the problem? We, we don't have problem only with Cinghiale. Uh, we have probably problem also with uh, Capriolo, so wild deer. Uh, yes. So Cinghiale is a problem because uh, he ate uh, the grapes one night and he destroyed a lot. But the deer are, are worst because they became resident and they hit every night you know so um right the, the combo is a mess the combo is a mess yeah cervi yeah. cervi they also Chervi. taste really good and more really delicious more. as well yeah there's more yeah so it, it, grazie maurizio thank you very much un piacere grazie mille è stato un grande piacere ciao Thank you very much, Maurizio. Yeah, you have people uploading you. Good job. Thank you. Grazie. Okie dokie. Okay. Uh, I can be here for as much as you guys want. Um, but we go on the, on the last wine. Let's taste the last wine. Everybody has this wine. Everybody has this wine already. Uh, the, that was in all the fourth years of the wine club. That is... This guy, Avignonesi Griffi 2018, yeah? Okay. Nice, okay. Yeah, I recognize the wine. <laughs> Because the wines on the wine club, I keep them open, all of them with the Corbin, because I want to follow the evolution. Because every time I select the wines for the wine club, 
I am so self-critical that I keep tasting the wines and I'm like, oh, are they going to like this wine or not? So, you know, I get very judgmental towards myself and towards the wine that I select. But, you know, on the, these are wines that I drink at home on the first place. So this is the most important criteria that I use when I select the wines for the wine club. Okay, doke Francesco, I'm leaving. Yes. My wife will continue. Yep. Turn off. We have to go to the airport. <laughs> okay. Oh, we'll yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. Beautiful seeing you all. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to share the screen. We have a few uh, information on the wine. Hold on a sec. Here you are. Present. Okie dokie. Yeah. See the background, how beautiful this picture is. This is the Avignonese estate on the background. It's a bit blurry, but it's it's beautiful. It, it's a beautiful estate in the heart of in the heart of Tuscany, just in between Montepulciano and Cortona. So Avignonese, IGT, I Griffi, 2018, one of the iconic uh, super Tuscans in the 80s and the 90s. The grapes are 50% Sangiovese, 50% Cabernet Sauvignon. The average altitude of the vineyard is 300 meters above sea level. The aging is 18 months in French oak barrique and large Slavonian oak, which um, I'm not sure, but I as I'm assuming that the Cabernet Sauvignon ages in the French oak barrique and the Sangiovese ages in the large Slavonian oak barrel, 6,000 liters because usually Cabernet Sauvignon gives, it, gives its best in small barrique, in small barrels, and Sangiovese in larger barrels. The soil is clay, loam, and calcareous sand, which is the soil especially ideal for the Cabernet, Cabernet Sauvignon. Bottles made around 20,000, so a higher production. Alco percentage, 14.5, price 40 euros. Okie dokie. Let's see the wine, the color of the wine. It's a red ruby color with much higher intensity than the previous ones that we have tasted. I would say a red ruby, the lean towards almost a purple kind of color. No, it's, a, it, it's a red ruby, but like a much thicker texture than the previous ones. Um, yeah, let's smell the wine. Hmm. Yeah, the wine is robust compared to the wines we tasted before. Uh, great intensity as well. With an intriguing bouquet of black currants, a very like like dark fruits, black currants, uh, dark cherry. With this note of you know dried flowers, like a dried violet, which is a touch that the Sangiovese gives. Uh, a marked note of. Uh, like almost like coffee to it and a touch of uh, like dark chocolate and kind of leather. So, you know, this is a super Tuscan. Super Tuscans are the wines in which winemakers could, well, first of all, this is a, a sorry, um, a biodynamic wine as well. Avignonese is fully biodynamic. The super Tuscans are the wines that, you know, were born in the seventies and the eighties. That is the category that gave the winemakers, you know, room to experiment, to experiment new things. So the blend in between international grapes and local grapes such as the Sangiovese. The blend of Cabernet Sauvignon and Sangiovese is one of the most important blends for Super Tuscans. Tignanello, one of the most important to Super Tuscans has this blend. And the Griffi is another beautiful, beautiful example. But this touch of leather, it reminds me of a Tuscan wine. So you like when a wine smells like leather, it brings me to Tuscany. In a blind tasting, I might be able to say that this wine, even though has got the character of a Cabernet Sauvignon, has got a Tuscan soul, which is very, very, very interesting aspect. So you know, a super Tuscan, they have this kind of leathery components all the time compared to a Bordeaux or a Napa wine, which are, you know, they use similar grapes such as Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot. So 
Beautiful bouquet. Let's see the palette. Yeah, the palette is fresh, very warm, richer in alcohol compared to two wines that we've tasted before, but vibrant with beautiful, beautiful acidity with a lingering finish of dark fruits. And the tannins, the tannin is very firm. It's kind of a little bit more strict compared to the previous ones. The previous ones that played more on the acidity, this one plays more on the tannin, I think. Uh, uh, the tannins, you know, are typical of the Cabernet Sauvignon. It's a beautiful expression, you know, uh, of, of, of the terroir of Montepulciano applied to the super Tuscan philosophy. So, you know, uh, this wine has got a totally, with this beautiful, you know, tannin typical of the Cabernet Sauvignon has got a, like a hard rock personality to it, you know, hard rock music. I don't remember which song I paired this wine with in, ah, uh, yes, Black Sabbath, War Pigs. So, <laughs> so very, very heavy hard rock because the, you know, the, 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 the tannins remind me of a hard rock music. Very interesting, very interesting to see with the same system of biodynamic production, a whole completely different wine to the ones that we've tasted from Maurizio. So, you know, and we just, uh, five miles apart from each other, the two wineries. So, you know, a completely different approach of winemaking. Uh, there's the same approach of, of farming, of biodynamic approach, but different approach of winemaking. Here, there's a blend with Sangiovese and Cabernet Sauvignon. Very, very interesting, beautiful wine as well. Okay, any questions, guys? We just pretty much got towards the end of the tasting. I'm gonna show you just uh, just mm -hmm. just one minute. I'm gonna show you. Uh, I prepared like our for the ones that are not that haven't subscribed yet. This tasting will be posted in here in will be posted in our youtube channel which is osteria del borgo montepulciano the name of our restaurant and then you have information from us on instagram and facebook under the name of perbacco wine club and the website is www.perbaccomontepulciano.com slash wine club so these are all the information and import but this is very important if you guys want to, you know, if you have appreciated Sebastian why Sebastian's explanation and Maurizio's explanation and Maurizio's wines, you can order more through me, obviously. You can send me an email if you'd like to try the wines from Poderele Ripi, which is a great winery. They have been on the wine club before. And when I did uh, boutique wineries, and they have been in the wine club and the current shipment on the gold level with their beautiful Syrah. But if you want to, you know, understand more about their wines, you can order them through me, obviously, and also Maurizio's wines. If you like the wines, you can reorder them. And this is for all the wines of the, of, of the wine club. If you like the wines, you can reorder, you reorder them anytime through, through me, through us. Okay, Mike, you raised the hand. Please, my friend. This is Kathy. Um, yeah. I wanted to know uh, the wine glass you're using because I was going, oh, I like it. It's pretty sexy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, hold on. I have them here. It's an Italian, it's an Italian brand. Mm -hmm. I, I like this very much because, hold on a second. Oh, here you are. I like this very much because it's very technical mm -hmm. as well. Bormioli Rocco. <laughs> No, sorry, Luigi Bormioli. The Bormioli okay. family is one of the most important glass makers in, in Italy. So this is it. This is it. It's called Supreme Wine Ambassador. It's the Bordeaux, it's the Bordeaux glass of the line. Yeah. And a, a, a price range for it? 
it's not too expensive. I'm a very yeah. cheap guy. So <laughs> uh, <laughs> are they hard to, or easy to break? No, not that hard. The fact that I still have this glass after I have a set of sea glasses after three years, it's a clear proof because I'm a disaster mm -hmm. that it doesn't break really easily because nowadays, you know, glass, it's, well, I, I might write an article on the wine club blog about this because stemware and glasses is something that is very fascinating and is becoming more, mm -hmm. more, you know, the, the point of the discussion nowadays, even among sommeliers and wine lovers and winemakers as well. A lot of people, they use Zalto glasses. They are like the top, top glasses. But the problem is the Zalto glasses, they're 100% crystal. They are amazing. They give a beautiful light to the wine and they're perfect for, perfect for the wine tasting. But they're very expensive. I'm talking about I'm talking about you know fifty dollars per glass sometimes, which is a huge, you know, mm -hmm. expense, and they're very easy to break. Mm -hmm. So I don't recommend them very much. If you go to a Michelin star restaurant or to a you know a two hundred dollars per person restaurant, they need to be having those glasses. Mm -hmm. They have the proper washing machine, you know. And, and, and this is the kind of service you're paying for. But, but I like to use technical glasses. This, I think this is perfect. Of all the glasses, when I have to do the wine descriptions, the wine tastings, the wine pairings, the, the wine club descriptions, I use these glasses. They're very technical and they have, this part is very narrow, so it concentrates really well. You have enough space to aerate the wine and you have, you know, the, the surface here is not too wide. So all the smells, they come just to your nose. It's very direct, the, the, the smell of the wine from, from this glass. I like this very much. I can highly recommend this. Thank you. Very welcome. Any other questions, you guys? Oh, bon appetit, Bill. <laughs> We're going to have cassoulet uh, later. Nice, nice. We these two wines should we uh, pour with it? The the uh, the vino nob uh, I think the vino nobile the, the the vino nobile goes really well. We're in the gold. Yeah, the the, the reserve as well. The reserva from Maurizio goes really well, I think. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. It's gonna be a really good pairing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Oh, Matt is online. Matt Zipkowskis, Arizona. Oh, Ryan had a question. Can you explain the term Super Tuscan as opposed to Super Tuscan? Yes, yes, absolutely. So, uh, hi, Ryan Tessa. How are you doing, guys? Good to see you. Thank you very much for the question. So we did uh, one of the first uh, online tastings I've done last year in November. It was about Super Tuscans. Super Tuscan is the term, like I said before, is that defines the wines that don't belong to an appellation that is historically you know, made here, wines that are historically made here in Tuscany. So for instance, in Montepulciano, you have Vino Nobile di Montepulciano. In Montalcino, you have Brunello. In the Chianti region, you have the Chianti Classico appellation. These appellations, they have very, a long history, and they have very strict set of rules. In order, I mean, it's right to have so a lot of rules because they have to preserve the, you know, the consortiums, which are the people that control on the quality and on the authenticity of the wines they control and they set a very strict set of rules that you have to follow. Super Tuscans were born in the 60s, 70s to give the winemakers more room to invent, more room to uh, innovate, to mix and match, to blend Sangiovese with other grapes or to blend other grapes typical from France or from California into the Tuscan wines. So there was this fashion in the 60s and the 70s to create wines outside the appellation that were not called Chianti Classico, not called Vino Nobile, not called Brunello di Montalcino, 
and they were just called, you know, the French style wines at the beginning. There was the need to invent a term, a category that would categorize all these high quality wines that didn't belong to the appellation. They were outcasts because in the Chianti Classico, in the Brunello appellation, in the Vino Nobile, they didn't like these guys very much because they were saying, what are these guys doing? We are Sangiovese people and these guys are blending Sangiovese with Merlot and Cabernet Sauvignon. This is pure blasphemy. <laughs> so they didn't like that. So there was the need to categorize them. And an English journalist, he came out in the beginning of the 70s saying, okay, we have Tignanello, we have Sassicaia, we have Solaya, really high quality wines that don't belong to any appellation. Let's call them super Tuscan because they're Tuscan wines, but they're super. So super Tuscan term was, you know, born to describe this, this category of wines. So, yeah. Great. Any other questions from you guys? Okay, so if there's no other questions, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say goodbye to you all. I see some people already left us, some other people that had to leave, some other people that had to take a plane, actually. I hope they didn't lose, I, I hope they didn't lose the flight because I talked too much. I hope I didn't, I didn't cause that, <laughs> that kind of issue. <laughs> So uh, I wish you a Merry Christmas. I wish you the, the happiest festivities. I wish you an incredible new year. And I hope that 2022 is going to be much better than 2020 and 2021. Merry it's not Christmas. a difficult task because it was not, it's not a couple of, a beautiful couple of years, but at least this year, I got to see a lot of you guys here in Montepulciano. I'm talking about, you know, Steven and Davidia, the the Grisbacks, I've seen you guys here a month ago. Bill, I met Bill here, you know, a couple of months ago. And I hope that, you know, next year I'm going to see a lot of you guys, whether in the US or here in multiple channel. I see Linda as well. Linda's a good friend. You look back. beautiful, Linda. You look great. It's beautiful to see you. It's Francesca. good to see you too. Steven. Molto grazie, buon Natale. Buon Natale a te. So again, we are, so I was supposed to do other online tastings, but due to the delays of customs nowadays, logistics is a mess. You guys all know that I wrote you all about that. So I postponed that to probably March or uh, well, February or April, 2022 or may we'll have to see i have to see how it develops but i think i've seen we sent a few shipments out and they're going faster than the ones that i sent in october so i'm relieved with that i see the logistics is doing a little bit better so we'll do online tastings and i have great 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 news for you guys uh also maybe in march and april if the situation get better if covid will allow me i'll probably go to california we have some events yeah Mark. there you go guys so i'll probably go to california so i'll keep you guys posted about this so yeah i'm, I'm just looking forward to it i want to be out of italy I, I love italy is my you know I, I love italy this is my home but i want to travel a little bit more so closer <laughs> thank you guys very much it was beautiful to be online with you guys Bye. I don't know if I was Bye. nervous at the beginning. Yeah. Thanks. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.